Whether you've used Linux for a long time or you're just starting out, applications make or break Linux. It's just absolutely the case. If you switch to Linux and the, you can't find at least alternatives to the application that you need to use, Linux is pretty useless. And it's pretty much the same with any operating system. If you can't find good quality applications that do the things that you need them to do, you're kind of lost and alone. So what I wanted to do today was talk about the five most important Linux applications. Now, before we jump in, there's one proviso that I need to get out there. The applications that I'm going to cover today are almost universally, in fact, I think they are, yeah, they're universally available on every platform, not just Linux. I do call them Linux applications, even though they're not technically just for Linux. But they all are open source applications, but that doesn't make as good of a title, so... Let's just go ahead and jump in. Now that I'm being a YouTuber, let's do this thing. So number five on the list is one of my personal favorites, and that's Vim. Now, not everyone's going to be a fan of this choice, and that's one of the reasons why I've put it at number five. But I think that Vim is one of those applications that is just essential for people to use, or at least know the vague ins and outs of how to use, right? It, you should at least know how to quit Vim, right? Because eventually, somewhere along the line, you're going to end up inside of Vim, and you should probably know how to get out. Now, if you aren't interested in Vim or you're not interested in putting the time into learning Vim, Nano would be a good alternative to this. It is a very much more, it's a much more simple application than Vim is for sure. It doesn't have all the great features, obviously, but it does do the job. So Vim slash Nano comes in at number five. And personally, I think Vim is one of those things where it's just really good for you to learn for multiple reasons. One and maybe even the biggest one, is that you'll find key bindings that are associated with them all over the place, not only in Linux, but in open source applications, basically everywhere. HJKL have become the standard keys to move around when you are in a certain application. So if you use a lot of terminal-based applications, you are probably going to discover that HJKL are the primary navigation keys. And if you have no clue how to use Vim, you may be uncomfortable with that. So learning Vim and learning how to navigate through Vim will definitely at least get some of that muscle memory up to speed. So Vim slash Nano is number five on the list. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. The next one is Thunderbird. Now, I know that native email clients aren't all the rage these days. They're not necessarily something that most people think about, but if you are a Windows user, chances are one of the things that you have to deal with, especially if you have a native email client, you're probably going to have to deal with Outlook. Now, Outlook is a it's a very complex program. It does a lot of stuff beyond just doing email. So finding a alternative to it on Linux it can be a little bit difficult because while there are several applications that do the main things, finding an application that basically does everything that Outlook does is basically impossible. Thunderbird, I think, comes the closest. It has tasks, obviously it has email, it has calendar, it has a chat client built in for whatever reason, I don't even know why, and it just does a ton of different stuff, and it is probably the closest alternative to Outlook on Linux, and obviously it's free and open source. So I would say Thunderbird is probably one of those applications that either you really like it or you really don't. And honestly, I've talked about email clients on Linux before. None of them are all that spectacular. Thunderbird probably is the best one, and that's the reason why it's made the list. So let's go ahead and then and move on to the next one. Now, this one here is not going to be one that everyone's going to have to use or even going to want to use, but it is one of those premier Linux applications that is a necessity for a lot of people. So that is Kden Live. Now, when you switch away from Windows, one of the primary things that people say is the hardest is that they no longer have access to Adobe's applications. And one of those big Adobe applications that people miss is Adobe Premiere. Now, I will never claim that Kden Live is as good as Adobe Premiere. It's not. But it does a lot of stuff right, and most of the stuff that you could do in Premiere, you can also do in Kden Live. Now, the workflows are completely different, but you can find basically everything you need to do inside of Kden Live if you need to edit videos. Now, 
like I said, this is not one that everyone's going to need because not everybody's sitting down editing, editing a YouTube video. But if you do have the need to edit a video or you're one of those people who use Premiere when you're on Windows, Kden Live is probably the best alternative to Premiere that we have on Linux. Number two on the list is a big one. So probably the number one application that people use on Windows outside of the web browser is probably Microsoft Office. People use Office a lot. They use it as a word processor with Word. They use the PowerPoint for presentations. They have Excel for spreadsheets and stuff like that. And then there are several other smaller parts of the Office suite that just kind of go into making a large number of programs that people use for productivity. And that is what we call Office. Microsoft Office is a very essential part of a lot of people's workflow. And when you move to Linux, finding an alternative is actually not as hard as you'd think because we have several really good ones. My favorite and the one that I've put on the list is LibreOffice. LibreOffice has several different applications as a part of its suite. Obviously, it has Writer, which is the equivalent of Word. It also has LibreOffice Calc, which is the equivalent of Excel. It has Draw, which is a PDF editor and does a whole bunch of other stuff as well. It also has a presentation alternative to PowerPoint. So LibreOffice is a full suite of applications just like Office is, and it works really well, not only with its own open source document format, but also with Microsoft Word documents. So if you have a lot of Microsoft Word documents stored up, you can still edit them inside of LibreOffice if you need to. Now, now there is some debate over whether or not LibreOffice is the best when it comes to support for Microsoft document formats. Now, I'm on the side of that it works just fine. Every time that I've had to open up a Microsoft Word or a PowerPoint or an, an Excel spreadsheet inside of LibreOffice, it's worked just fine. Maybe here and there you'll see some formatting differences that just don't kind of work, but they're very, very rare. Now, I will be the first to admit that I don't do that very often, and it hasn't happened in quite a while now that I've switched over to using LibreOffice when I need an Office suite. So my experience there isn't as broad as some other people's. So if LibreOffice doesn't work for you, then another alternative is OpenOffice, which is not as broad. It doesn't have as many programs in its suite, but it claims to at least support Microsoft Office document formats a little bit better than LibreOffice. Whether or not that's true, I can't actually say because I've never used it. So just to give you an alternative in case LibreOffice doesn't work for you. Let's go ahead and move on to number one. Number one is GIMP. Now, Photoshop is one of those applications, again, just like Premiere is, that people claim they absolutely have to have. And it's one of those things that holds people on Windows, despite the fact that a lot of people don't like Windows. And the thing is, is that Linux doesn't have a fantastic one-to-one -one application that will go up against Photoshop. It really doesn't. It has a couple of really good alternatives, but they're significantly different in terms of workflow than Photoshop. It's just kind of the way it is. GIMP is the primary, most popular one. It's really, really good. It does a lot of different things. It does have some limitations, obviously. It still doesn't allow you to select multiple layers. Supposedly, that's coming in version 3.0, but when that will come, who knows? It's also as you can tell by the tone of voice that I just used, very, very slowly developed. <laughs> so if you, you know, they claim to have all these fantastic features coming and I trust them that they'll eventually come. But if you are interested in a very fast paced development cycle, GIMP is not going to be for you. Now, I've just said a whole bunch of negative stuff, but GIMP is still very, very good. It's very, very stable and it works very, very well. And if you need to do a lot of the stuff that Photoshop does, GIMP will get you there. It's just going to be in a different workflow than what you're probably used to. Now, as I've been through most of this video, I'm trying to give some alternatives to the ones that I've spoken about. And the other one that is discussed oftentimes with GIMP is Krita. Now, Krita is a KDE project, meaning that it has a lot more features than GIMP does. And from the artists that I've talked to and the artists that I've seen on YouTube, Krita seems to be the one that digital artists tend to flock to simply because it does a better job of supporting like Wacom tablets and stuff like that. So if you're a artist of any kind and you have digital peripherals that you want to use in, in your artwork, Krita is probably a little bit better for you than GIMP is. But if you are more focused on the photo editing stuff, 
GIMP is probably the other the alternative that you'll want to try. Now, as with all of these, I'd suggest using both because you may like the interface of one or the other, depending on how it goes. Also, I'm not sure why the monitor keeps going on and off in the background. That's not supposed to happen. Linux, right? Am I right? <laughs> Anyways, so those are the top five most important applications along with a few extra alternatives there sprinkled in. These are the five applications that I think that make it possible for most people to switch to Linux. These are the ones that I think that most people, or at least a lot of people, would look towards as alternatives to things that they'd use on Linux, or on Windows, I should say. Now, there is one more that I didn't include in the list and I want to kind of throw out there, and that is OBS. OBS, obviously, is cross-platform, but if you are someone who makes any type of video content, OBS is probably the thing that you use to do it. I'm using it right now. In fact, I'm staring into it right now. And it works fantastically on Linux. So uh, OBS, if you are a digital content creator, specifically when it comes to video, OBS is available on Linux. It works really, really well on Linux. And you should definitely use it if you need to. So uh, I didn't include it because despite the fact that it that streaming and making YouTube videos has become a lot more popular in the last few years, not everybody needs to use OBS. So it's kind of a, it's still a very niche product for the most part. It's just a very small number of people who have to use it. Many more people use a word processor than use OBS. Let's just put it that way. So that is it for this video. If you have thoughts on the most important Linux slash open source applications, leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Links for LiberaPay and YouTube will be in the video description as well. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing without you the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very very much for your support i truly do appreciate it you guys are just absolutely amazing so thank you so much again thanks everybody for watching i'll see you next time